the guys who did the deal and the QIP, uh, IDFC SSKI, along with Antique, uh, Prashant Shetty, Managing Director of IDFC SSKI, is with us now. Prashant, uh, afternoon, thanks for joining in. Uh, uh, take us first through uh, whether there is some kind of a green shoe, since the book was done 2.3 times. Can Unitech retain more than $325 million? Are they looking to? Good afternoon, but uh, on the deal size, uh, there is no green shoe option, though we uh, uh, built the book more than two times. Uh, but uh, honestly speaking, uh, the uh, response was really more than what we had anticipated. Though when we started the entire process, uh, we were not really uh, sure about in terms of the response that we will achieve. But as we started marketing it and then t started talking to the investors, uh, we saw the demand coming through. But the kind of response that we got was really overwhelming. Mm. And uh, thanks to the other bankers also on the transaction, Morgan Stanley and UBS, who are also the other bankers on the transactions, I think uh, uh, we could do a good job for Unitech. Mm. What's the general feedback you got from them, uh, Prashant, from the, from the larger investors like uh, HSBC and Government of Singapore, etc.? Uh, are they, have they got some renewed confidence in the real estate sector? Because it's one sector which has really underperformed and there has been general skepticism for the last one year on that space. That's true. I mean, the sector has been the... Uh, it went up also uh, quite dramatically <coughs> up and uh, it came down also dramatically. Uh, but I think what has uh, really changed this, uh, especially from a Unitech perspective, is that people saw the change in terms of the attitude uh, Unitech is moving from uh, the larger premium segments that they were looking at to the mid-income segments and uh, we have had good responses on the mid-income segments and some of the sales that they have done in Gurgaon, something that they are doing in Chennai. So they have got a pretty good response and I think that's the confidence that uh, possibly investors also looked at that there is a basic demand. Uh, at a certain price level, which is between, uh, you can say, between 8 to 20, 25 lakhs, there is demand, there is, is the issue of affordability, and it's a question of uh, focusing on that particular segment. Mm. And, Prashant, uh, afternoon, can you just, uh, was just asking if you could walk us through who the top two or three investors are in this QIP. We understand that Halibus has picked up close to $125 million from the total deal. Can you break that up for us in terms of who the top three investors are in this QIP? No, you have actually all the names. I mean, what you said, Halibus, Government of Singapore, uh, Prudential. So you have all the names. It's just a question of uh, the allocation that uh, we're just doing it at this point of time. But uh, which will happen uh, over the, uh, uh, the course of the day and we'll complete it today essentially. Mm. Is there any lock-in as well that has been uh, tied in with this QIP Prashant? Lock-in for? Lock-in for the investors who have invested in the QIP? No, no, this is a normal QIP, so the, any sale which happens uh, for the QIP investors uh, on the stock market, there is no lock-in. Prashant, uh, did, in your conversations with Unitech, uh, your client, uh, did they indicate that they would be looking to access the QIP market uh, for further raising of funds over the next six to nine months in any fashion? No, no, I think the main uh, issue, uh, we haven't discussed any further capital raising, but the main issue was uh, essentially to deleverage the balance sheet. And uh, that is what we were looking at. What they have done is basically do, uh, do some restructuring on their uh, existing loan portfolio. This QIP will also enable them to deleverage it a little bit more. And uh, hopefully uh, with the sales which is happening on the uh, segments, uh, on the uh, uh, sales that they're doing across the cities will possibly improve their cash flows, which will then they can take a call in terms of how their actual cash flows move. Mm. But we have had no discussions in any further uh, uh, QIP is going forward. Are you feeling more heartened, Prashant, that uh, there is money to be to be had for a lot of companies if the pricing is correct? Uh, now that there is some improvement in sentiment, because we've seen a couple of QIPs go through. And these are the first spate of capital raisings which have happened after quite a long time. But are you getting the sense that the market has thawed a bit and other companies can go ahead and raise some capital now? I think so because uh, uh, it's the right story and the right pricing. Uh, there are investors and that's what we actually uh, 
gathered uh, during our road show so it's really heartening to see that there is genuine interest uh, if the story is right and the price is right and i think it's time if uh, people can actually put the stories together uh, they would be definitely investor interest on good stories will this be the preferred route as well for most real estate companies looking to raise cash prashant because there's been a lot of concern about whether they would have to do some kind of asset fire sale or they'd have to go back the equity way i.e. do something like a rights you think there is enough appetite right now in the qip just for real estate stories yeah if you look at the sector itself i mean lot of the players have changed the strategy they have moved from a premium segment to the segment which is the uh, mid space so if uh, the uh, there is a genuine demand at that uh, levels and if all the companies are looking at that there is a market for it there could be other companies who could also look at uh, tapping the uh, capital markets for raising the additional uh, funding for themselves but there is a demand for uh, uh, good stories Okay, we'll leave it there. Prashant, appreciate you joining in. That's the deal that's being talked about the most these past 48 hours. Unitech, who have managed to close up a successful QIP and get some oversubscription on that front. Some